Hello, I'm David Frazier, a.k.a. The Market Monk. And this is our daily Market Monk show where we strive to tell you everything that you need to know and nothing more regarding daily factors and developments that are likely to affect the value of your investment portfolio. And today, on Friday, May the 9th, there wasn't really anything around the world that uh, we were able to uncover uh, that uh, we would expect to expect your financial market portfolio. Uh, and, and not surprisingly, stock market indices in most parts of the world were relatively unchanged today. In fact, they were pretty much unchanged for the entire week. For example, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed today on Friday, May 9th, up a mere 70 points, 70 points as compared to its close last Friday. Meanwhile, uh, stock prices in Europe, China, and Brazil, at least the major stock market indices for those countries, were, uh, were also virtually unchanged uh, versus uh, a week ago, while the major stock market indices for India and uh, in Japan, we're down modestly, very, very modestly though. Now, regarding uh, factors and developments uh, or important ones that happened throughout the week, there wasn't any significant news uh, regarding Russia and Ukraine this week. Russia supposedly, according to its president, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, withdrew some troops from the Russia-Ukrainian border. However, uh, government agencies and other entities here in the United States and Europe uh, said that they were unable to verify that. So I don't know whether there was a troop withdrawal or not. Uh, regarding um, the release of uh, important economic statistics, the Institute of Supply Management, uh, which does uh, surveys of hundreds of purchasing managers around the country on a monthly basis and has done this for over 50 years, reported earlier this week that according to interviews that it had with those purchasing managers, that uh, economic activity in the services sector of the U.S. economy rose at an accelerated pace during each of the past two months. And economic activity in the manufacturing activity has been expanding for almost three years now. Uh, but during each of the past two months, uh, it expanded at an accelerated pace. So that's a very, very positive development. Another announcement this week showed that uh, productivity, that is the output per hour at U.S. manufacturing companies, continued to rise during the first quarter of this year. Now, uh, that same report uh, showed that uh, out, uh, labor costs per hours, labor costs per hour at manufacturing companies also rose during the first quarter of this year. However, uh, there's been a, a large positive gap between output per hour and labor cost per hour, a big positive gap uh, between those two variables for um, many, many months now. And as long as, as that gap remains positive, that is that U.S. companies are able to um, produce an increasing number of goods and are able to do so at uh, very modest increases, if not declines, in the cost of producing those goods, well, I would expect profits at U.S. companies in the aggregate to continue to rise. I mean, you know, profits is determined by revenues minus expenses, minus um, expired costs. And, um, even if revenues were to remain virtually unchanged, as long as uh, the cost to uh, produce uh, a company's uh, products um, it remains low or, or declines or rises at a slower pace than the productivity, well, their profits are going to rise. So that's a very, very positive development. Now, that's all I really have to say today. Remember, uh, this show is about daily uh, developments around the globe, whether uh, it be geopolitical or economic or just the general trading action and financial markets around the globe. If you'd like to uh, 
get more information from us regarding our uh, much more detailed analysis of recent factors and developments that uh, have been affecting the financial markets, as well as where we think stock prices are headed over the next few months based on uh, numerous uh, leading economic indicators from around the world and on our review and analysis of many, many other factors, I urge you to subscribe to one of our newsletters. Uh, you can do so uh, at absolutely no charge for a period of two months, meaning you do not even need to put in any credit card information. You can actually get our, uh, any of our newsletters for free for a period of 60 days simply by going to our internet website at www themarketmonk.com and clicking on financial newsletters in the uh, gold colored menu bar and by doing so you, you can you know some information on our different newsletters and uh, our annual subscription fees and so forth and uh, and um, but you can subscribe for free for a period of 60 days now um, that's it for today I still have anything else to talk about now I could do like uh, all broadcast TV shows do, and most uh, videos, business-oriented videos on internet websites do, and that is, I could continue to talk for another 20 minutes about nothing, simply so that we could collect uh, advertising revenues from entities that advertise on our website. But you'll notice by going to our website, we don't, uh, we don't have any advertisers on our website, and we do that purposefully. No, we do not try to make money by uh, by uh, collecting revenues from advertisers and forcing you to watch and listen to something that you're not interested in. So um, that's it. That I, uh, that's all for today. Uh, those of you that are already subscribers to our newsletters, as always, I'll provide you with a weekly update this coming Sunday. And as I mentioned earlier in the week, uh, there's a very, very, a very good chance. I'm going to make uh, some changes to our speculative portfolio. Uh, but uh, uh, I'll tell you about that uh, uh, this coming uh, Sunday or Monday morning at the latest. So I uh, thank you for listening, and, uh, and I'll speak with you.